Hey, hey, Dr. Tiff with S2TV. I want to talk to you guys today. I, I did a test, a VO2 test of myself on Monday, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I learned from that experience and being able to compare my own personal data. Obviously, I do this all day with my clients, but I haven't tested myself in a couple years, and I've been noticing in classes, and we're seeing this uh, recently with a lot of our clients that the zones are not correlating as well with the way that I feel my perceived exertion is. For me, I was feeling like I wasn't able to get into that red zone as easily, that my body was becoming more and more efficient, and perhaps I needed to adjust my top end and what we're basing all of our zones off of, which is typically a heart rate submax. Um, and so even with our VO2 test, we're not really looking at actual max heart rate all the time. It's really a sub-max um, variable. And what I've learned through a lot of research is that age is really the only variable that dramatically can change our true max heart rate. What can change is our sub-max or what our heart rate um, adaptation becomes in that 95, 100% zone of our submax. So I retested myself and my uh, peak heart rate during my test was 165 and I've had my heart rate set at 175 for about a year uh, when we first started um, Studio 2 and we, we were you know getting everybody plugged up in the heart rate monitors and whatnot. I set mine at 175 and I was getting in the red zone and then in the last six weeks or so I've noticed a big shift in my body and in, in my endurance capacity and what I found out from my test was that my submax is now 10 beats lower. And at first, I kind of stepped back and I thought, is that good or is that bad? And as I started digging and doing more research, what I realized and what I want to help to explain to you guys out there that are doing heart rate based training is that as our body becomes more and more efficient, it's not unusual to see our top end of that peak zone dropping down. Multiple studies have shown the impact of aerobic and anaerobic training on adaptations to our um, cardiovascular system, specifically in dropping that max or submax heart rate a little bit lower. So what I've seen is um, specifically, and I've got a little bit of a chart here to show us, but let's take a 35-year-old male because what we do know is male and females are different. And we also know that age is a huge factor in our max heart rate. Our max heart rate decreases with age. So really important that we understand that. But if we take 35-year-old male and we look at an untrained versus a trained individual, inevitably you're going to see that their submax heart rate, for this example I used 190 beats per minute, is going to decrease as that individual trains. And we can see that adaptation as quickly as three to six weeks. So when you first start out training, you may have that heart rate set at a certain variable. You may be using 220 minus your age or the Carvinen method, or if you train with us, we're using your VO2 test to determine what is that top end for you, but need to reevaluate that over the course of training because you might see a shift and specifically if you're having trouble getting your heart rate up into those higher zones it's probably time for a retest on the flip side of that if you're stepping off the treadmill onto the floor to start class and you're already red there may be an indicator of overtraining there so there's other variables at play sleep can impact it our nutrition can impact it um, our immune function can impact it, but specifically training can show a drastic decrease in our um, high end zone of our heart rate when we're using heart rate training. Some of the reasons for this are stroke volume and resting heart rate changes. Stroke volume is the volume of blood and the oxygen that that blood is carrying that gets pumped per beat. So as we become more fit, and our heart is more efficient and it's pumping more oxygen to our muscles per beat, we don't have to beat as many times in that minute. So as our training increases and as our fitness capacity increases, stroke volume improves, we don't have to utilize as many beats per minute to get the same amount of oxygen to our blood, or excuse me, to our muscles. 
so they can keep working and they're working more and more efficiently at those lower heart rate zones so you can get more output without stressing your heart as much. And our resting heart rate decreases. As you get more fit, you're not having to beat as many times per minute in terms of your heartbeat in, in order to maintain homeostasis. So our resting heart rate becomes lower, our bodies are more efficient. So all this being said, if you're going to use heart rate training as a mechanism for training intensity and performance improvement, you need to understand that there are some very intricate changes that happen with training and being knowledgeable about when you need to adjust those ranges. So one, you're working hard enough, right? If you've got that heart rate too high or too low and you're not in the right zones, you may not be getting the most out of your workout. You may think you're red and you're not because your heart rate max is too low. On the flip side, if you've got it too high and you're overtrained because you're constantly trying to push into zones that you're just not feasibly able to find, then you need to bring that heart rate down and make sure that you're actually in those 80, 90% zones is going to get the most benefit without a risk of overtraining and injury. So um, I really, I enjoy doing the test on myself and evaluating my performance improvement, but also being able to utilize those results to help people understand that a higher max heart rate doesn't mean better. A higher submax heart rate doesn't mean better. It's all individualized and it's what's going to push you and what's going to maximize the efficiency of your workouts. So if you haven't retested in a while or if you've never tested, come see us and find out what your heart rate ranges should really be. Thanks, guys.